Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a combo deck called Omni Flood as it tries to combine the newly printed Flood of Tears to put an Omniscience in play without having to pay its mana cost. So the way the Flood of Tears is worded, we can return all non-land permanents to their owner's hands. So it's also just a nice tempo play, buying us a bit of time. And if we return four or more non-token permanents we control this way, we can put a permanent card from our hand onto the battlefield without having to pay its mana cost. So the goal of the deck is to cast Flood of Tears, pick up four or more permanents, and then put an Omniscience in play without having to pay its mana cost. Omniscience, a 10 mana enchantment that lets us cast spells from our hand without paying their mana costs. So once we put an Omniscience in play, it's usually pretty straightforward to win the game. We of course have a lot of permanents that when they enter the battlefield draws cards, so by picking those back up with the Flood of Tears and then casting them for free with Omniscience we get to see a lot of new cards. And then once we find one copy of Tamio, Collector of Tales, which with the minus three lets us return a card from our graveyard back to our hand, which means that Tamio can minus to find the Flood of Tears in the graveyard, put it back into our hand, and then of course we can replay the Flood of Tears, which will again return all those permanents back to our hand. We can again put the Omniscience in play, and then start recasting all our spells for free, and one of the permanents we picked back up is Tamio, which can then again minus three, returning the Flood of Tears, so this is kind of an infinite loop. And then eventually our win condition will be Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, which wins us the game if we draw a card from an empty library thanks to his static ability, or if we use the plus one as well. So a pretty straightforward way to end the game. So once we've got the Omniscience in play, it usually doesn't take too long to actually win the game. And taking a look at the rest of the deck, we've got a Lanor Elves at one mana to help us speed things up a little bit, and also just a nice cheap one mana permanent to count for the Flood of Tears. It usually dies, but that's fine. It just helps us ramp into turn three Tamios and kind of smooths out our draws a little bit since we have a lot of clunky two mana cards otherwise. Then at two mana, we've got two copies of Fibblethup, which draws a card when it enters the battlefield. And that's kind of all we want out of these cheap permanents is they have to stick in play and preferably be difficult to interact with and to draw a card when they enter the battlefield so we can keep drawing through our deck and find the missing combo pieces. And also when we cast a Flood of Tears, if we don't have the Tamio Flood of Tears loop already, we want to be able to draw into those combo pieces by replaying all these cards that draw a card when they enter the battlefield. So we've got two Fibblethups and then four copies of Guild Globe, which draws a card when it enters the battlefield and is an artifact, so pretty difficult to interact with, and four copies of Urban Utopia, which enchants one of our lands and fixes for mana and also draws a card when it enters the battlefield. So these eight two mana permanents are pretty difficult for the opponent to remove, so they tend to stick around and make it easy for us to have the four permanents needed for the Flood of Tears. And then we also have three copies of a Root Snare as a fog effect to prevent all combat damage this turn, which can help us against the creature decks since we don't have any removal, we're a bit slow to set up sometimes, and sometimes all we need is just to buy one extra turn and cast a Root Snare to help us survive and then go off on the following turn. Plus, Root Snare also plays very well with Tamio since we can protect our Planeswalkers with Root Snare and then use Tamio minus three, get back a Root Snare from the graveyard, which again buys us more time. Then at 3 mana we've got a full playset of Risen Reef, which provides an advantage when it enters the battlefield, and especially multiples is great. And when we're going off with Omniscience in play, Risen Reef also speeds things up significantly, since if we Flood of Tears back a couple of Risen Reefs, then they tend to draw through our deck very quickly to then win the game with Jace. And then we also have two copies of Narset, Part of Veils, which can also help us assemble the missing combo pieces. It finds all these Urban Utopias, Guild Globes, Root Snares, and all the different Planeswalkers, as well as Omniscience and Flood of Tears. So Narset is great at finding those last missing cards, and especially if we can pick up Narset again with the Flood of Tears, we get to replay Narset, Activator again. That's another way to pull ahead. And that's also why Planeswalkers are great with Omniscience and Flood of Tears, even though they can be somewhat vulnerable and don't always stick around. Then at 4 mana we've got the full playset of Tamio, which is a very important piece of the puzzle here, helping us combo with the Flood of Tears once we have the Omniscience in play to lock things up, and also with the plus one helping us find the missing combo pieces we need. And that's also why we want as many 4-offs in the deck as possible. I wanted to make room for the fourth copy of Root Snare, but couldn't quite find room for it. And then of course we also have our Jace Wheeler of Mysteries, which is our win condition. And even if it dies, as long as it doesn't get exiled, we can always get it back with Tamio's minus ability. So we shouldn't be too afraid of running him out, since Vraska's Contempt is not a card that's played too often. And other exile-based removal spells like the Prison Realm, for example, we can bounce back with the Flood of Tears, so that's not a problem. So it's mostly just cards like Vraska's Contempt that can punish us for running out Jace early. 
And then of course we've got our combo pieces here for copies of Flood of Tears, which is also just a nice play sometimes even if we don't have Omniscience to put in play, since it buys us so much time and rebuys all these 2 mana permanents that draw more cards. And then finally three copies of Omniscience, don't quite want a fourth copy since it doesn't actually do anything unless we're comboing off with the Flood of Tears. And then our mana base, we've got plenty of lands since we want to be able to hit lands with Risen Reef, and we do want to get all the way up to 6 mana without missing a land drop. So we've got 6 basic islands, 7 basic forests, and 4 breeding pool, giving us 11 untapped green sources for the Lanor Elves, and then 4 copies of Hinterland Harbor, and also the full playset of Temple of Mystery, which is great in this deck, helping us scry 1 and find the missing combo pieces. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand seems okay. It's a bit slow, but being on the play makes up for it, and we can spend our time playing some temples in the meantime. So we've got most of the pieces we need here. Usually don't actually want to draw the Jace, since uh, it usually dies on the spot and only draws a card. But uh, yeah, we've got the Flood of Tears, we've got the Tamiyo, and a Risen Reef, so we're looking for more permanents to keep in play. So, Guild Globes, Urban Utopias, Risen Reef will keep since we've got another one in hand. And hopefully those will put some lands into play as well. well let's see what we're up against. Turn one Breeding Pool into Arboreal Grazer. So some sort of ramp deck. Alright, I see Field of the Dead, so opponents playing the Scape Shift deck here. Trying to make some zombie tokens with... Field of the Dead, not a Risen Reef, I mean, sure, why not? Eventually we'll want to keep lands on top, but... Especially against a deck that doesn't really kill our creatures. Having more Risen Reefs is useful. The Fairy Time Raveler, so that can let them escape shift at instant speed. And can also bounce a Risen Reef, but that's not a terrible exchange for us. But now we could regret uh, not keeping a land on top. Instead our opponent pluses the ferry, since bouncing Risen Reef also feels pretty bad. But now we'll get two Risen Reef triggers. And Rejuvenator will ramp the opponent some more. So yeah, this matchup is kind of tough if the opponent has the ferry in play. Without the ferry we could just Flood of Tears and bounce all the zombie tokens the opponent makes after Scape Shift. But with the ferry they can play it at instant speed on our end step. And then we won't have the Flood of Tears to clean up those zombie tokens. So we basically have to combo before the opponent manages to assemble enough lands in play. And we have the Omniscience, so it could be possible. Root Snare is also not too useful if the fairy's around. Should have played my land first here in case we drew into a land or elves, since this is not like your typical draw effect, the land will go straight into play. Otherwise we might have wanted to wait in case we drew into a tap land. Alright, the fairy will bounce the Risen Reef this time. And a Roots to put two more lands in play. Alright, so next turn they could already cast a big scape shift. And missing our land drops hurts, so let's play the Risen Reef. Alright. I think we still want to put that in play. We could put it in our hand and then play it from our hand, but it's not like we can Root Snare with the Fairy in play, so... Might as well put it on the battlefield and then play Lunar Elves. So next turn we could potentially go off, we'll see. bone has got the Risen Reef. And a gross barrel. Alright, so they won't be scape shifting quite yet. And a grazer. So if we hit the Lanor Elves off the top, it's pretty much game over. A land instead. So we're one mana short of actually comboing off here. Goes in play. Don't need more Tamios. And a Fibble Thup. Alright, I mean, it's a Chum Blocker, so that helps. And then I guess we'll play this tapped. 
and pass a turn. Alright, so I think we're in good shape to win this game. The escape shift deck doesn't really have any interaction. Escape shift is not going to mess up our plans at this point. They're pretty far from doing anything with this blast zone. Next turn we can Flood of Tears, put omniscience in play. And we already have the Tamyo for the deterministic win. The fairy pluses. We'll take four damage here. All right, sweet. So we'll go ahead and play the Flood of Tears. Even if they blast so in the Lanner Elves, we'll still have four permanents. Maybe I should play it safe and just like play a Tamiya beforehand. In case our opponent has some instant speed removal for one of our permanents. Plus, probably just naming... I don't know, Guild Globe or Urban Utopia. We'll go with the Guild Globe. And then we'll Flood. Flow the mana first. And yeah, that's a combo assembled. Opponent has already seen Tamyo. And escape shift making a million zombies is not gonna help them. Alright, let's put omniscience in play. And that should be game. Can replay some Risen Reefs. Which will draw through our deck very quickly. Opponent can still play their sorceries at instant speed here. But that's not gonna affect the way we win the game. Sure. So yeah, usually playing Risen Reef is the fastest way to empty our library. So we'll do that. And since we have so many backup Tamios, I think I wanna minus Tamio, get back Risen Reef from the graveyard that we milled earlier. Let us see if your talents are worth cataloging. So again we can empty our library faster. Twenty-eight cards currently, but it's gonna reduce in size pretty quickly. Let's play some of these cantrips. And then either we'll draw into another Flood of Tears or we can play another time, you minus return Flood of Tears from the graveyard. Alright, we'll play Narsets. And, and, and I guess it's time for another Tamyo. Minus some Flood of Tears. I guess we can mill ourselves with Jace a little bit too here. Opponent might concede after seeing Jace. But I'll happily go through the motions. Eh, that's Flood of Tears. Just gotta make sure to put Omniscience back in play. And it's Risen Reef time. And one important thing to note is that Risen Reef doesn't lose us the game if our library is empty, because it doesn't actually draw cards. And our opponent sees the writing on the wall and packs them up. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Seems like a keep here. Lanner Elves ramping us into a Tamyo, and then Rootsnare plays well with Tamyo as well. There is a reason to play Breeding Pool if we draw into a Narset. Could have been worth it here. If we top deck a Narset, we're going to be sad that we didn't play the Breeding Pool turn 1. And against turn 1 Godless Shrine, I mean, it could have still been some sort of Vampire Aggro deck. 
life total could have mattered. But, uh, alright, we didn't get punished at least. But yeah, if our opponent played a black-blue dual land first, then we definitely should have uh, taken two damage. Against Godless Shrine, it's unclear whether or not they're gonna be maybe a Vampire Aggro deck, or if they're on control. Well, we've got some Planeswalkers and we've got our two combo pieces, so that's good, but if we miss on a land drop here, we could be in trouble. Another Thought Erasure, probably taking the other Tamiyo here, leaving us with a Jace. So on the bright side, our opponent's not going to be pressuring our life total anytime soon, so we've got time to set up. But if they've got more Thought Erasures, and we don't have a Tamiyo in play, which of course protects us from discard, then uh, they could rip our hand apart. And Root Snare not too important in this matchup. Well, Forest doesn't let us play Jace, so hopefully we can find an island or maybe an Urban Utopia or Guild Globe off the top. Ooh, Dovin's Acuity, haven't seen that in a while. So that's our opponent's card draw engine here. Well, if they're on Mastermind's Acquisition, they could find some problematic cards out of the sideboard. And they might also be playing Vraska's Contempt, since that plays well with the Acuity. And Contempt, exiling Jace is going to be difficult to beat since then we have to win with Risen Reef and Fibblethup and Lanarelf Beatdown, which I don't think is happening. Camster picks up Acuity. So yeah, we're not doing much here. Didn't find any of our cheap cantripping permanents. Alright, there's one of them. Another Root Snare is not what we need here. So, if we want to sack Gil Globe, we can play Jace. Usually, don't want to sacrifice the Gil Globes if we can avoid it. And Acquisition getting a card out of the sideboard is not going to be good for us, since they can get any card that disrupts our combo here. Unmoored Ego, for example, naming Flood of Tears or Omniscience shuts our combo down. And that's going to be game over. Alright, there's a Utopia a bit late to the party. So, this variation of control is going to be a pretty bad matchup for us, as we see the Unmoored Ego, since they have access to the Acquisition to grab any hate out of the sideboard. Unmoored Ego, of course, very effective against any combo deck like this one. Names Omniscience. So, without Omniscience, it's going to be very difficult for us to win. Technically not impossible, since we still have Jace, but again, our opponent's also likely to have Rascal's Contempt, the other card we don't want to see. Get a Temple of Mystery as a replacement. If Jace gets countered, we can just get it back with Tamiyo, but... If it gets exiled with the Contempt, then... Uh, I think I'll pack it in. Alright, so... I guess we'll Jace. Probably just want to mill myself. Um, so there's no point in playing the Temple first. Risen Reef seems fine. So do they have Vraska's Contempt? Or do we keep playing? And there's a Vraska's Contempt. Alright, that's game. I don't think we can realistically win without Jace as our win condition in this matchup. Alright, I guess we disconnect it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty solid opener. Got Lanarels for a bit of acceleration, multiple permanents, and then both Flood of Tears and Omniscience. So, could use a few more lands, but otherwise, a pretty ideal opener. And I guess I'll play the Elves on turn one here, since we can still play the Guild Globe, plus Temple next turn. Facing turn one Stitcher Supplier, so probably a Reanimator deck. Looks like a blue black variety here. Featuring the new Blood for Bones card, probably. Let's cry into another Risen Reef. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll keep that. Do want to hit our land drops, but can we really say no to a second Risen Reef? I don't think so. Ooh. Well, now we get punished a little bit for keeping the Risen Reef, so if this doesn't draw us into a land, we'll be pretty sad. Alright, saved. And definitely don't want to keep the Guild Globe now, digging for lands. We've got the Risen Reefs for value. And a Rotting Registrar. Well, that's going to beat down pretty hard here, 7-6. Can, of course, jump it with the Risen Reef if we get the chance. Put that in play. Definitely going to take the first hit. Since we want a Risen Reef value and we also want to keep permanence in play for Flood of Tears, but we'll see in the next couple turns what happens. So it looks like just blue-black zombies, maybe not as much reanimator as I thought. And a Midnight Reaper. Alright, we'll take eight. And drawing into a Root Snare would be ideal here. Alright, so the good news is that we have a lot of lands in play. The bad news is that we're going to have to chum block with the Risen Reef and then we won't have the four permanents required to Flood of Tears to put Omniscience in play. So we're just uh, one permanent short here of going off. If we draw into a, a Lanor Elves next turn we can still combo since then we'll have the four permanents required unless they have interaction here. But yeah, we have to chump. I can always time your minus and get back a Risen Reef, which is still okay. I can always Flood of Tears without putting Omniscience in play just to buy time. Which isn't unreasonable if we think that gives us the best chance. But I think right now what gives me the best chance is just Tamio minusing on the Risen Reef. And we were kind of close to just uh, hard casting an omniscience here too, so that's always an option. Right, Lanerals, so now we've got a few backup permanents. Also something worth pointing out is that sometimes with the Risen Reef you actually want to put the land in your hand instead of into play if you haven't played land for the turn yet, so it comes into play untapped. Registrar attacks. We'll just jump here, take four opponents empty-handed, so this should be a deterministic win at this point. I guess we'll plus first. I uh, guess I'll name... Probably just not a Risen Reef. Cast a Flood of Tears. Put Omniscience in play. And if our opponent has played against his deck already, they'll scoop him up, and there we go. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. A little on the slow side, but being on the play makes up for it, and then hopefully we'll get uh, some good draws here. Wanna watch out not to play the second forest, in case we pick up a Jace Wheeler of Mysteries. Alright, Lorwyn Enforcer, so up against a Mono White or Mono White Splash Red aggro deck here. So this is going to be a matchup where drawing into a Root Snare is going to be pretty critical. Tamio can return Root Snare, so if we've got enough mana, that can keep us alive. Opponent not attacking, not sure what they were playing around here, but uh, I guess that works for me. Maybe they thought we were on the Simic Flash deck and we had the uh, Cutthroat, the 2 1 with Flash, that they didn't want to run into. Opponent could be on a Feather deck, so they value their Legionnaire, maybe it's one of their only creatures, as we see Gird for Battle. 
so yeah that's the advantage of sometimes being in the same colors as a another deck that uh, is popular is that people will play around cards you don't even have in your deck some would sprint on the legionnaire so that's gonna hit pretty hard I think we still gotta take the first hit although it looks like they have a reckless rage so yeah we're taking 10 here don't think we're surviving this So I guess we'll temple first. Maybe we should Utopia and just hope to draw into a root snare. But one root snare by itself is not going to be enough since we just have the three lands in play. So we need to be able to probably Risen Reef, survive the next turn somehow. And then next turn set up the root snare. I guess that makes sense. Land would be okay, but I think we gotta dig for the fog. Omniscience doesn't help. And Exxon's binding, so they get to hit us for eight. Yeah, we gotta get very lucky from here. Another Risen Reef that we can't cast because of the Exxon's binding, so the only play is Utopia. Find the land, so yeah, we're dead. Alright, well, there was a pretty savage draw from the opponents. And Dreadhorde. So if they didn't miss that one attack to try and play around the Cutthroat, then uh, we would have already been dead. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. I guess we'll keep... We don't get to play Narsa turn 2 since we don't have a breeding pool. But, uh... Still seems okay. Opponent on a black-green graveyard deck. So maybe some uh, undergrowth synergies that we can expect. Murphy Branchwalker. As we see Golgari Raiders, so the undergrowth theme is definitely present. Utopia seems okay, we just want to find some permanents to put in play here, since we already have Flood of Tears Omniscience. Next turn could play Narset. Alright, Glow Spore. Might have to trade off the Lanner Elves for this Glow Spore just to buy a bit of time. Opponent puts land on top. Not too many creatures in the graveyard at the moment, so this uh, Raiders is not too effective. So Timing is a good one. So yeah, cards we're looking for at this point. So Root Snare is definitely on top of our list. Cards like Risen Reef, Guild Globe, cheap permanents we can put in play. Opponents going face with everyone, well, I'll take it then. And lots us on tap, so we'll activate Narset. A Root Snare, it's perfect. So, I get to go Urban Utopia into a Root Snare. And I guess we'll play another Elf. I'll use my Lanerals for mana in case our opponent has removal end of turn, so we can still play Root Snare in the opponent's turn. But now we've got Root Snare plus Tamio, and I guess if they don't interact, we just Flood of Tears with Omniscience next turn, which would be game. So yeah, I guess our opponent had a bit of an awkward draw, not hitting the creatures they were hoping for. So we have a backup Omniscience, so we don't really care about them destroying the Omniscience, since we can just cast the second one right away. The problem is if our opponent uses Assassin's Trophy or some removal spell in response to the Flood of Tears, because then 
we will only have three permanents and we don't get to put omniscience in play. So I think the safer play here is just to play Tamiyo and then get back Root Snare from the graveyard. And this way we will have one additional permanent in play as well for next turn. So a single removal spell on the Lanar Elves won't mess up our combo. So we'll Root Snare again. Opponent passes. So now 4 mana means they could have Raska's Contempts. I think we still go for it. Even if we don't combo off completely, we could kind of try and play around the Contempt a little bit. We can just put ourselves very far ahead. So let's float some mana. I guess we'll plus Tamiyo first. Uh, probably just name a 4 off that we haven't drawn yet. Risen Reef. Cast a Flood of Tears. Put Omniscience in play. And the first thing we want to do is just play another Omniscience, just in case they have a way of destroying enchantments at instant speed, but our opponent packs it in since we have the Tamiyo, we've got the Flood of Tears in the graveyard, so they know that uh, they're dead if they don't interact. Alright, well, that's gonna do it for me today. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.